I'm going to pick Chase Elliott. I'm going to pick Chase Elliott to win at Texas Motor Speedway. That is my early pick for the win on Sunday. Well, that was something, to say the least, a very interesting race, I'd say, at Texas Motor Speedway today. But everything is bigger in Texas, and this is going to be one of the biggest celebrations in a long time as NASCAR's most popular driver, Chase Elliott, returns to victory lane. Now, let's talk about it. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news, and everything NASCAR. If this is your first time into the channel, I would appreciate you subscribing. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, comment your thoughts on this video. What did you think of the race today at Texas Motor Speedway and the return of Chase Elliott to Victory Lane? Plus, let me know any improvements I can make on the channel. Let's get to this race, because it was a doozy to say the least. This race started off with Kyle Larson getting his third straight pole. Kyle Larson has had a great season this year qualifying, has been really fast in the race, but has not finished the job a lot of times this season. The beginning portion of that race, I'm not going to lie, had me a little upset, along with a lot of people on Twitter and other social medias. It was a hard watch, to say the least, for most of that race, because after around five or six laps under green flag racing, everybody would begin to separate Air was a huge deal. If you had dirty air, it slowed you down so much. Tires didn't seem to matter all that much. If you had that track position out in front, it didn't matter if you're on two tires, four tires, or no tires. You were most likely going to have a huge advantage over the rest of the field, and we saw it throughout the day. Yeah, no offense to these guys, Zane Smith or Harrison Burton, but these two drivers have been outside the top 30 most of the season. Harrison Burton and Zane Smith were mixing it up with these guys for a good portion of the race. These two are running outside the top 25, top 30 for most of the event. But then a certain strategy call came up where Zane Smith and Harrison Burton were able to get up towards the front and maintain track position and also being on older tires. That was all the proof I need. And that's no offense to Zane Smith or Harrison Burton. I'm actually a big fan of both of those drivers. But let's face it, they have not performed all season long, and they definitely were not performing today as well. Clean air meant everything. Everything. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I tell you, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. But then I'd say in the second half of this race, the race kind of got flipped on its hood. We saw multiple times throughout the early portions of this race, couple of drivers either going through three and four and hitting those bumps in three and four and going around or in one and two if they get a little high they just there's no grip up there and they lose the car up there as well driving through turns one and two and turns three and four was very treacherous not just all day today but all weekend for nascar and i haven't seen that many wrecks in a long time it's not fair to these fans for them to not see any more wrecks than that and more tore up cars i mean we we still had over half the cars running at the end and that's uh it shouldn't be that way. This race is really going to be splitting the fan base when it comes to who thought this was a good race versus who thought this was a bad race. It really just depends on what you were looking for. Me personally, I'm happy with the result because Chase Elliott got back to victory lane. I wouldn't say I'm a very big fan of Chase Elliott. I've let that be known on this channel multiple times, but he is amazing for the sport. He's what the sport needs. He needs to be out there winning races and competing for championships. He's a huge deal to a lot of the fans. He's a huge deal to the sport in general. And Chase Elliott winning races is always a good thing. But I'd say this was a bad race, in my opinion. I don't think everybody's going to have the same opinion as I do, but I did not like this race. I've never seen a race that I would describe yin and yang. This was a yin and yang race. You had two different halves of this race. You had a great portion of this race be where... There was no passing, air meant everything, like I mentioned earlier. But then the other half of this race was a complete and utter wreck fest. And some people like that. Some people like to see a bunch of wrecks. Some people like to see a bunch of chaos. I get it. I like to see wrecks and chaos sometimes as well. But I much rather have preferred to seen that last weekend in Martinsville. You're late. 
So I know that everybody is not going to agree with me. Some of you probably thought it was the best race ever. A bunch of wrecks, a bunch of drivers not being able to handle their cars, and Chase Elliott, the most popular driver, wins in Texas. What is there not to like for some people? I get it. I get it. But what I like is racing, and I did not see a lot of racing today. I definitely saw some strategy, and I'm always appreciative of strategy. I enjoy watching strategy. But the whole strategy of this race was finding clean air. That's really all it was about, was finding that clean air, because the clean air meant everything today at Texas, as it has in a bunch of races in this next-gen car. But you saw a bunch of drivers lose it on their own, which in a way is a good thing. I don't like seeing all these different accents, but at the same time, I love to see drivers struggle with the handling on their race cars. And we saw that all race long. We saw Bubba Wallace almost spin it. We saw Ty Gibbs almost spin it. We saw Christopher Bell wreck. We saw Jimmy Johnson wreck. We saw Kyle Busch have some issues. We saw Denny Hamlin spin out and wreck with only a few laps to go. So there's definitely going to be some mixed opinions on this race, and I'm even a little mixed on my opinion. Overall, I'm leaning towards it was a bad race, but there was a bunch of elements of that race I did enjoy. Yeah, Chase Elliott gets back to victory lane and a bunch of drivers had issues like I mentioned Denny Hamlin and Christopher Bell but the one that had probably the biggest issues today was Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson potentially had the best car. It was really hard to tell because of what I was mentioning with the clean air and the tires. It didn't really seem to matter about the tires. It was really all about the clean air. Then he's driving on the apron and you just see his right rear roll off around halfway through the race and he was able to get back on the lead lap. I'm not sure if the diffuser on the car got hurt from driving around or what had happened or if it was just, like I said, the dirty air. The dirty air had that much of an effect on his car because he was never able to get back to the front and he even spun out with just a few laps remaining in the race. So a very tough day for Kyle Larson to say the least. He had a very fast race car, but once again, Kyle Larson has the best car, the fastest car potentially, and doesn't get into victory lane. It's been a story of pretty much his whole career. And you can almost lump Christopher Bell into that as well. Christopher Bell did not have the best car today, but these two drivers tend to be the ones that make the most mistakes. At the same time, they also might be the two most talented race car drivers in NASCAR. I'm talking about Kyle Larson and Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell was surprisingly able to come back from his mistakes. When he spun out and his back end hit the wall as hard as it did, I thought for sure he was going to the garage and his day was gonna be done. Christopher Bell ended up turning out a pretty good day for that number 20 team with all the damage he had on his race car. I almost forgot to mention Brad Keselowski. How about Brad K, huh? It looked like he was struggling most of the race, especially early on. Early on in that race, I remember he was dropping like a rock. I think we were like 15 laps in and he already lost like 10 spots. He was struggling insanely hard at the beginning portion of this race, but that car was constantly worked on throughout the day by that RFK 6 crew to make it a little bit better. And then he was able to get that track position. Then strategy came into play late. And if you asked me with 15 laps to go, I would have told you that Brad Keselowski is going to win this race because he was flying on those four tires. But once he got into the dirty air, he, he was done. Once he got into the dirty air, there was nowhere he could go. He was completely stuck where he was. Ross Chastain was also a big time player late. He had a strong car throughout most of the day. And I'll, honestly, was not as aggressive I, as I expected him to be. He was actually racing pretty cordial in those last few laps, was not racing too aggressively. I expected him to send it a couple of times when he was on that second row. I don't know if he was quite close enough or just chose to not risk making it three wide or even move anybody out of the way. I was really impressed with how nice Chastain was racing today but ended up costing him coming out of turn two as it looked like he slid up the track and just really slowed up coming out of two and Byron honestly just ran him over. I don't think Byron was, I don't think there was any ill intent from Byron hitting him in the rear end and Chastain, I don't know where Chastain ended up finishing, but he had a good car, a top five, top 10 car throughout the race. I will once again mention, I don't really know who actually did have one of the best or the best cars. I'm just going by where they ran throughout the race. So it was definitely a very insane and intense and drama filled race. There was multiple times in this race where I wasn't sure at all who was gonna win, but Chase Elliott ended up coming out on top after a very crazy race at Texas Motor Speedway. I've harped on this track a bunch. I've been very harsh on Texas Motor Speedway a bunch and it's with good reason. Like I said, I'm very mixed on this sort of thing because the drivers did struggle and we have been saying how we want 
drivers to struggle a little bit. It just seems like they're all easily driving. That's why we don't see a lot of self spins. That's why we don't see a lot of wrecks during the race as much as we used to because these cars are a lot easier to drive. But this car and track combination made it really difficult for these drivers to handle their cars in turns one and two because of there being no grip above those first lane and a half, two lanes. And then the same thing in three and four, but instead of there being no grip, it's extremely bumpy. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I've never felt this way about a race before. It was one of the most weirdest, interesting races I have ever seen in my life. Overall, I was not a fan of the race because I didn't see any actual racing throughout most of the race unless strategy got involved. But overall, my final thought is I'm very happy that Chase Elliott was able to return to victory lane in the nine car. It's been a long time since he's been to victory lane. He's NASCAR's most popular driver. He made a lot of fans, not just happy watching the race, but those fans at that racetrack at Texas Motor Speedway were stacking up that fence like I haven't seen in a while. It was really great to see. There wasn't a single open space along that catch fence when Elliott won. And that was really cool. I really enjoyed his interview. Very, very humble, as Elliot always is. It's one thing I will give him. He doesn't always give the best interviews, but he's extremely humble, which I love to hear. And I really liked him paying homage to Alan Quickie. I saw him doing the Polish victory lap, and I was like, how about that? He won a race in the Hooters car, and he's doing the Polish victory lap. And I was hoping that maybe there was some thoughts of Kowicki in his head, and you clearly saw that with his interview as he immediately brings up Alan Kowicki and that battle he had with his father, Bill Elliott, for that championship in 1992. And that was also the last time Hooters ever won a race in the Cup Series, as Hooters has not been to victory lane on a Cup Series car since Alan Kowicki at Pocono in 1992. So two winless streaks were ended today, one personal for Chase Elliott and one from Hooters. Hooters has always been a big supporter of not just NASCAR, but auto racing in general. So it's really great to see Hooters back in victory lane, such an iconic brand. Now let's see if Chase Elliott can continue that through the rest of the season. He is now locked into the playoffs, which is going to make a lot of fans very happy. I bet, I bet some of you fans haven't even thought of that, that, oh, Chase Elliott's in the playoffs. Oh, I'm locked into the playoffs. Uh, playoffs? That's how it is for Elliott. He's locked into the playoffs. Can he continue this momentum? Because the last couple of weeks for Elliott have been really strong as well. He's had some top five runs, has shown a lot of speed over the last couple of weeks, and then able to get this victory. He has all the momentum, potentially one of the hottest drivers in the sport now at this point. But that'll do it for me. Congratulations to Chase Elliott, to Hooters, to Hendrick Motorsports, that whole number nine team. It's such a great moment for the sport, a great moment for NASCAR as its most popular driver returns to victory lane. Well, that'll do it for me. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.